like like other people, right? I'm gonna do my therapies online in future because there was a priest who called me yesterday and he says three uh, or four kids who has finished MIT who are very high achievers somebody committed suicide. He's saying kids are taught like to be how to be a winner. And he says nobody is teaching them how to be a loser, how to learn from your failure and rebuild yourself like Stephen. And he was saying he was hurt. And he was saying what we are focusing as a society, as a religion, is only giving them tools how to win. And he says finally he is at a place where even religion he sees is not supporting the failures. So he says, this has been his dream for two years, he told me, and he says he almost died. Yesterday, for some weird reason, we connected. He said he went to the hospital because he suddenly lost uh, 20 pounds. And he said to me, uh, because my dad is turning 80, so I contacted him to celebrate my dad's wedding because my dad, never accepted the Indian part of him. And because of that, I find I ashamed of myself. There's a piece in me I cannot accept. That thing is finally coming together for me too. Why I cannot accept is because my dad never accepted. And my dad got married to this Italian girl. Suddenly out of blue, he decided to date and go and get married. And he kind of abandoned his whole heritage. And then he secretly tells my husband, if my wife dies before me, cremate me, like Indian way. But if I die before her, let me have a Christian ceremony of burial. And I was hurt. I'm like saying, so my husband doesn't even directly connect her with my dad. He feels more supportive of talking to my husband, then coming and telling me what is the end of life wishes are. Whereas, you know, it's just mind boggling, whatever is happening. But so he had an American wedding and my um, middle son, right? That he ran, he was very connected with my dad and he tried to hug him. His wife pushed him and she says, he has paid you guys enough. Now it's our time. Wow. And that's the way they started. We tried to integrate them. It never worked. And finally, like, you know, when she came one day to visit us, it got so out of hand. She called me and reported me to DSS. Wow. So I'm abusing my kids. And so we had to go through DSS investigation and stuff because she said we were abusing and stuff because she doesn't understand my dynamics with my husband. She believes, like, I'm a cash cow. My husband is controlling me. Like, just weird ideas. Anyway, my dad sits and supports all that. So we have very dysfunctional relationship, just like you guys, right? So I finally, my dad says, oh, 18th birthday, I want to celebrate with you. I said, how do you want to celebrate? He says, I want to come down here and celebrate. I said, the whole point is for you to celebrate your marriage. I said, if you want to do it your Indian way, I said, let's get you married Indian style. If you don't want that, he says he wants to have a lunch in New Jersey. I said, I'm not going to go all the way, August 27th, yeah. to drive. His, his birthday is August 16th. And he's celebrating on the 23rd, which has no connection. And he's inviting us for lunch. And he expects me to drive all the way there. I said, Dad, it's not going to work. I said, but if you're going to do star birthday like they do in India, you need to get married, right? Like you need to have the Indian wedding ceremony. And he says, in that case, I don't want to invite anybody. And I said, would your wife accept the Indian wedding? Because she threw out all his shrine, all his deities and stuff. Because she's Christian, Catholic. So he was so afraid, he gave me <laughs> my mom. My mom's last gift was the uh, goddess of food, nourishment. He passed it on to me. <laughs> and my mom, her soul, he needs to feed her once a year. He decided suddenly he's fed enough. He, he closed that ceremony last year. He completed with her. 
I mean, he, he's doing things in a bizarre way. His own mother died last two years ago. He didn't even support her. <laughs> and last year, her ceremony finished, and that's it. She's gone too. So everything is booted out. So. <laughs> and I'm saying, what's the point in Indian marriage? He's trying to run around to please people, you know? So the reason I'm bringing it up is, so what happened was I, I told my dad, I said, if you really want to get married, let's do it properly. Ask your wife whether she wants an Indian marriage. I said, we will as a family, accept her. And he's been married for 10 years, final, not even 10 years, uh, 14 years. Finally, he's hearing me, okay, 14 years later. Okay, so, so I said, I will give you a proper Indian wedding. We'll, let's like, you know, do uh, a house, get a house and bring your family. And, and in that case, my sister said, she's from India, she's willing to travel. So they are going to do it properly. So I told them, if you're willing, I'll do all the work. So he says he's agreeable to come. So I called him to the priest. And that's when he was asking, did you know I almost died? And I said, I didn't know that. And he says, two years ago, I was diagnosed with sudden weight loss. And somebody came for insurance physical. And usually I'll like, you know, put them off saying, oh, no, no, no. And the girl, it seems, told him, if anything happens to you, you can go on disability. <laughs> and the priest got freaked out because he said, he says he takes the word as very powerful. And when something negative comes along in his, in his life, he has to correct it. He says when that word came along, he says his energy was so weak, she could speak that. See, as a vibration, she did not even not even surface. Had he been in a good space, that's what he was saying. Uh, it's so nice, like, you know, some people, how they hear things. So he says, finally agreed to have a physical, right? So he goes and have a physical and they suddenly find something in the blood bile duct. And then they find a mass. And he doesn't even understand what a mass is. So he goes to Beth Israel and the doctor walks in and he introduces himself and he says, I'm the oncologist. And he says he never connects like you know English with his language, summer we, we speak. And he says it never dawns on him there is a problem. <laughs> so cute, right? <laughs> And uh, he says, he says, what is oncology? <laughs> <laughs> he says, I'm one of your doctors. Don't worry. They just wanted my second opinion. He doesn't even explain. So then he finally decides to call an Indian doctor because he had this Indian name. And he, the, the doctor, like walked in, it seems, he works in Bethesda. And he says, I saw you at a priest. So I came to check in, make sure you're okay. And he's a radiologist connected with his team. And he says, what is going on with me? Yeah. <laughs> and that's where the other doctor says, we don't know for sure, but because it's a mass, it's a potential for it to be a cancer. And that's why we are worried, but doesn't mean it's true. And that's when it hit him. Yeah. <laughs> he says, he died. <laughs> <laughs> it's like laugh, right? <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I'm sorry to laugh, but you know, it's like it's a comedy in comedy, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then afterwards, he said, then he first time he prayed for his life. Yeah. He always prayed for other people's life. Yeah. So he says, you know what? He, he calls uh, the being, he is connected with Shiva. He says, Shiva, he always had a vision of creating a temple, worship space. But he didn't have time, so he had him in a guest room and he prayed. He says, still now God was a guest. <laughs> now I have to give his own space. So I made a commitment. <laughs> I'm sorry, right? It's so funny, you know, it's like, I mean, like, I didn't laugh, but I was like listening to you. I'm laughing with you, but I'm sure, like, you know, because he was very serious when I was speaking with him. Sorry. <laughs> I give to, I give my composure because I, I laugh with you, but, but I'm sure, and he wants me to write about him, his journey. I said, okay, I will write. So he says, do you know, that's the first time I made a commitment 
to create a temple and he opened the temple immediately as soon as he actually not exactly immediately because it took they did a ripple surgery 12 hours he said he, he was shocked you know he had been a second to that and couldn't go on oh <laughs> but anyway so to wrap up like you know i need to uh, hurry up so what he said was um since then he's come across so many kids who died and he really wants us to do a community project that not only focuses on spiritual healing but really to bring psychology and like you know healing and ability to act the failure and grow from the failure so like a network of support and i said i'll make a commitment with you every wednesday that i can come and sit with you two hours and i said we can build this and i said i have all the stuff you need that my teacher teaches it as completion training because when you hear something with the pain in you like like you know somebody called you a loser at some point in life and that pain is what the kids hear when something goes wrong they don't even understand the past like you know their mom or dad would have called you a you are a useless guy like you know like like something you know suddenly that could have been said that carried like a big scar for them you know so one thing as a parent you never want that to happen to your child so the parent say your life situation not having a home having a fire at home and being lost should not be the thing that affects your child so go into khan academy register as a parent every day make a commitment to go to the library and work sit with her for one hour and teach her So she can be ahead of uh, the the education because education gives power for children. Once you educate them, they believe they can achieve anything. And the second thing is teach one skill set because at some point you'll be able to get them into technical school. Especially if you like in your situation, I'm not saying everyone, even my children. I would prefer them to have skills first before education, but they don't want to listen to me. My eldest one says, "Mom, you owe me an education." <laughs> So, but that's okay. But the thing is, like, you know, figure out one skill set that will bring her financially freedom. Whatever it could be, start somewhere. Find the best technical school, and you know you can put them through. Like, I, I have seen uh, CNA to uh, CNA program starting the eighth grade. You know, so by twelfth uh, grade they can get a job. So we want a job oriented education. So you can bypass this whole system of education, and uh, I am going to make a commitment as a community to grow you guys. So that you have any support you need, like now I can help you. But you need to figure out what exactly you want your life to look like. Because in case you don't know, I cannot even support you. So don't worry about life. Life is not that get stuck. Life always flows. The stuckness is the mind, because you believe you have a limitation. Remember, always we can be a river, even if there's a big boulder, you flow through. That's all life is about. Life is about flow, movement. A water figures out the way. Water is the the what what they call it like water is the symbol of life, right? That's why you bless them like sacred water. So always we have seventy two percent water in us. So you need to figure out. No matter what the life gives you, there is a way to flow, and you need to figure out what that flow would look like for you. The water takes you to the river. Yes. So take the easiest route, but take the correct route that's moderate, supportive of you. Because in the long run, you don't want tears either in another person. You know, that's also water. You know, you don't want to be cause of somebody's pain. I don't want to hurt somebody. You have a very good soul, you know. I see you, and I—that's why I hang in with you because I feel you have lost nothing. The fire is not a loss of your home. Your your ability not to live at a place where it hangs on to your old stuff. Maybe it just need to be burned, you know. Yeah. It's not the right, the right. God is giving you a way out, and you were in a relationship that's not even healthy for you. The only thing you're hanging on to is because of your daughter, and it's time for you to take what God gives you. Because secretly, He made your wish come true. 
So you are saying mentally, I wish I could just burn this down and move on. And that's what he's giving you. You have given a resurrection, a new life. Pick up the pieces and move on. You are a clean slate now, so you can rewrite your life. And like I said, you know, education is not stopped. Now education is done another way. There is nothing lost. Okay? Right. So you can move forward. I, I think I said it's all material things. 